I farm on the southern edge of Norfolk County. So below the sand plain, we have silty clay loams, clay loams, clays, sand, uh, and everything else has a base layer of just impermeable clay for the most part. Uh, we farm corn, beans, wheat, and hay, and no livestock other than a cat and a five-year-old. Yeah, and I farm uh, just below Hagersville and just above Jarvis, Ontario. Uh, our soils are mostly a clay loam. Uh, we do have a couple sand pockets the farther west we get, uh, but for the most part, it's just strictly a clay, clay loam. I think, like you, we both suffer from drainage. Yes. Or lack of. Lack of drainage. Uh, and uh, our soils are tight, and that is what makes it difficult. You can't just... I guess you can beat any soil into submission, but uh, the point of strip till is not doing that. Right. Leaving those roots in the ground and uh, leaving it undisturbed so the water's got somewhere to go. Yep. A couple of changes we did to the Don Pluribus system. Uh, the two coulters in the back, you can loosen bolts off and slide them back and forth to, make, to help out making that yep. berm. Uh, in our clays, uh, when it got hard and it got uh, really clumpy, and what the last, the final disc on the back was doing was actually taking the clump and throwing it out of the strip. Oh, yeah. And that's a big problem when it comes to springtime, when you want to plant right into this, yeah. like you got a divot a in it now. Yeah. yeah. So would that pocket hold water then too comes Frank? It was always damper in there. Yeah. Cause really it was always probably two inches deep or, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. The Coulter machine worked really good for us. Uh, it did the job. The problem was I like to do my strips in the fall in mm -hmm. August, September, when uh, on the wheat stubble where that grounds really hard and we were having a hard time with it penetrating in our heavy clay yeah. once in a while. Uh, it was good the farther west you got, just a little bit lighter, but I need something more consistent, something that's gonna draw itself in the ground. Well, that's shanks, it, your shank will pull you in. Since we've gone to a shank unit, this new one we've got. What brand? Uh, this is a Case IH 955. We don't do any um, fall strips. Well, actually, no, we do summer strips on our red clover, uh, but everything else, like all my tillage is done come springtime. And in the springtime, if I go too deep and we're gonna be wet, then we get sidewall smearing. We make a plow pan, even like with any tillage tool, you make that hard pan underneath. So it is just basically, a, a, we are just freshening the soil like, yeah. and placing some fertilizer. Um, it just, timing works for us better. Our springtime kind of approach is, uh, I just run out of time in the, in the fall. Uh, and it just gets wetter and wetter and wetter. And what we have found, when we were back in our vertical till days, like I'd be working all of my corn stalks and some guy would say like, uh, like a wet job in the fall is better than no job at all. Yeah. And that's just BS. Yeah. Like we found you have poorer drainage with those kind of tillage pieces. And uh, so we've just kind of geared everything towards like just when the ground is fit in this fall or in the springtime, like you be patient, just like any time, be patient when it just could be worked. Then you go hammer out and follow right behind with the planter and it's just, we run out of time in the fall. And then we do make some strips in our clover typically, but this year it never stopped raining in my part of the Norfolk County. Um, so we didn't get any strips made in clover at all. So yeah. we'll see how that goes in the spring. Yeah. And for us, I like the shattering effect I get in the fall time, like in that August, September area when it's dry and you got a cover crop on there and uh, those coulters go in and they kind of lift everything up yep. and fluff everything up and mellow it all out. And the other thing is I'm, we're really low on manpower around here. So I like to go in and do all this now. Yeah. And then the springtime is just a uh, spraying and planting for me. Yeah, oh, see that works nice. Yeah, because logistics matter. And that's, I think, is one of the nicest part about strip till is you eliminate some of the operations or you combine them. And all of a sudden you're getting two passes done or three kind of functions done in one or- Yeah, well, we went down yeah. from having, needing three operators to one pretty well. And then maybe just uh, somebody on the strip freshener yeah. ahead of the planter. Because that is a big deal, like, like residue oh, yeah. management is, is huge regardless of what, of what tillage practice we have. So, oh yeah, like uh, it's, it's incredible uh, in the springtime, even if you got a poor spreading system on your combine, you see it. it's mud underneath that chaff, yeah. like it's really heavy. Yeah. It, that's where it starts is right behind the combine. Yeah, and for us, well even like, like the head, like we don't run a chopping corn head, at, like, I don't chop anything. Um, the residue just kind of lays there, what we found with a chopping head is like you say, we have that mat of residue and uh, that holds it wet, 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 wet. And then you can't get your strip till made in the springtime, let alone in the fall. So like the key on like these tough, wet, poor draining soils is just be patient as heck. Like the guys on the sand are blowing through acres like crazy and you're, I'm still 10 days behind, like not behind, 
I'm still 10 days waiting. So it's just a matter of patience is the key. The soils will tell you when they're ready to go. So you just wait. But you know, like when you talk about patience, once we got our strips built in the spring, like we go out there with a little hand trowel and you go dig around and yeah. oh, there are two days. Yeah, Because well, there's it, only right? one piece of tillage or a piece of equipment that's got to go over there, maybe two with this yeah. pressure. But it's, yeah. yeah, it's very easy to... It makes it super simple. And oh, yeah. Have, My window's huge. Yeah, like you have once two a week off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And like uh, our window, the way we approach it is because I have corn planting season. <laughs> like it's uh like there's some years like where if the spring is is, is drier or the winter wasn't as wet um then we'll start pounding acres just to get stuff through if we're in the start first half of may then we're we're probably 50 acres ahead with the strip till unit and that just gives time for the soil to aerate a little bit dry down for the packing wheels on the planter as you as we get towards may long weekend and the humidity shifts and we get these drying winds out of the west um, then we're probably three rounds ahead and there's times where we, it, when the planter stops to fill up, the strip tiller stops at the end of his pass. So when he's fill, like when my dad's filling up the corn planter, the strip tiller will be stopped at the other end of the field or over here and you just wait because the fields will dry out. Especially for me in the fall, like I was talking about the clumps getting thrown out, you want a consistent strip. You, you can't have, like if it's throwing chunks out, like you either got to slow down or go Tweak home. something or go home. Yeah. So, but when you make, um, I would imagine that a summer fall strip could be a little chunkier than, yeah. a, than a completely new. Oh yeah. 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 Big time. Because you have, well, you have months to, for it to mellow out. Yeah. Chunky. That's fine. It doesn't bother me one bit. Yeah. It, yeah. But as long as it's in that strip. Because that would be our approach too. When we, when I strip my clover, um, if it's a little knobby, that's fine. Like it's, yeah. it's, you know, it's going to settle in. And I know for our strip till kind of combination or approach would be uh, I want it to look like a cultivator pass within that thing because a cultivator makes an astounding seed bed so just because it's not broad acre why can't I just tighten that in to make that you know we know it works well for corn so let's just do that right there we have tried our dawn in the spring and it's just in our ground it takes that two inch crust and just flips you're, it you're inverting it right and that's yeah, where that's all it does we've gone from random tile and then we got on a kick of doing all 30 foot centers. Yeah, yeah. And now we just did this past summer, we just did our first farm at the 20 foot center. So we did, oh, we, we're see. seeing the benefit to tightening them up. If you got a 12 row planter, get a 12 row strip tiller. There you go. Yep. RTK. Yeah. Yeah. Mat yeah match your, your planter and strip till width. Mm -hmm. uh, put enough horsepower on the front of the strip till unit, regardless of shank or coulter. Uh, like we have, what, so 16 rows at times three. And we've got a 380 horse tractor on the front of that thing. That, that is thing, and like RTK. Um, if you're talking a 40 bushel yield decrease, if you get off that strip, it doesn't take very long to... Dude, it pays pretty, like you can justify yeah. that expense for an extra four For 1600 bucks for the subscription for the year. Yeah, yeah once you got yeah. the equipment in there. So we started with a strip till, 12 row strip till on a uh, 215 horsepower tractor. And it pulled the strip till great. But once we got the uh, air cart with the hydraulic meters, the hydraulic fan, all that, I think it gobbled up probably, I figured it gobbled up between 50 and 70 horsepower. 15. But with the Dawn, the nice thing about the Dawn, we can swing back to that, uh, the horsepower requirements are really low Well, they just roll, it. right? You're yeah, pulling a wheel. Roll, yeah, so you're, you know, it's 10 to 15 horsepower yeah. per row unit. Yeah. But yeah, as soon as you put that cart on, the hydraulic capacity and the horsepower it needs to yeah. run that, uh, it, it takes a lot. Well, and that's where, like, it's also like, so we, we'll, we have a, a Deer 8310 on our unit, uh, we put an extra 50 horsepower on it, so now it's 360 horse. Capacity for the tractor, don't underestimate that part. Yeah. That is very true. Um, the strip till we bought, I don't think you could buy a 30 foot uh, turbo till for. No, no. Buy it's, two of them, right? Right. <laughs> the equipment costs, the strip till equipment, once you get it down, it, it is a lot cheaper. Yeah. When you're considering getting rid of a, like a, we still got a high speed disc that we use, but uh, we got rid of a turbo tool and a cultivator. Yeah, and then, and you, you are eliminating the, either the rental or the ownership of a uh, bulk spreader for right. fertilizer, typically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, like the learning curve is like this, like anything, and, uh, but the trend is up and better, and just go at it.